Red Dead Redemption 2 released on the 26th of October 2018, and received praise all around the board. From gamers to reviewers, Red Dead Redemption 2 was a masterpiece, which in terms of its story, it very much is. Few games or developers can immerse me in a world and make me feel for the characters like Rockstar does. I've spent many hours playing the story through its ending and interacting with the world in ways that I hadn't seen done before. Rockstar knows how to make a single player game that is fun, immersive, and realistic to an extent. They put time into their games and typically push a quality over quantity. Whereas with games like Call of Duty, we don't get a new Rockstar game every year. They take their time. Red Dead Redemption 2 would come out 8 years after the original Red Dead Redemption. Rockstar is known for their attention to detail in their games, which is very much apparent in Red Dead Redemption 2. The way the world interacts with your character, the abundance of animals, and the realistic way that they all interact with the world, the animations, graphics, all of it culminates into this beautiful creation. And there is no better way to let people enjoy the massive world of Red Dead Redemption than with an online mode. A mode that lets players make a character to their liking, and let someone that they created be thrust into this beautiful landscape. It seems like a perfect idea. Take everything that the single player story did well, and implement it in a way where people can interact with each other, and continue on a journey after they've already finished the main story. But Red Dead Online is anything but that. Red Dead Online was unleashed in December of 2018, with a beta release, limiting the players who could participate and let the servers be tested out it would allow Rockstar to make changes to online before everybody would be able to get their hands on it. Red Dead Online takes place in the middle of the main storyline, but it won't really give you any spoilers to the main game. In online, you can visit all of the landmarks of the Red Dead map and interact with characters of new and old, meeting up with Sean or Trelawney, or seeing fan favorites from the first Red Dead Redemption come back like Bonnie McFarlane or Shaky. It all seems to be coming together perfectly. A massive world, characters to interact with, and missions or online modes that would help you get money to get anything that you would need from the shops. And while Red Dead Redemption 2 may have more things to keep you busy, like hunting and fishing, online just seems stale, like it's all filler and missing all of the things that people have been asking for. Your online journey begins with you creating your character, choosing between male and female, and customizing their appearance to whatever you desire. I spent what seemed like maybe a half hour on my character, and I'm really not entirely happy with the way they look still. I just feel like no matter what I do to my character, they're always going to look like some messed up inbred. But that's besides the point. Once you create your character, you realize you're in prison for, well, I don't really know what. I can't remember if there's a reason why you're imprisoned, and if it was mentioned, then I certainly really didn't remember it. It didn't have an impact on me. You're being transported into town by some lawmen, when your wagon is ambushed. You are freed and subsequently given a horse named Scrawny Nag, a not very powerful horse, but it will get the job done for now. You travel with Scrawny Nag with this man who freed you back to a camp. You meet up with the woman that he's working for and you're told that you were going to help them take down the people that killed her husband. You go on some forced missions and eventually get a horse that isn't awful and go on your way. Eventually, you are allowed to free roam in this massive map, and then it begins your journey of seeing exactly what Red Dead Online has to offer. But I'm not here to dissect this story. I'm here to talk about pretty much everything else. But I do suppose that the story is a good starting point. My first gripe with online is the fact that your character doesn't talk, which I know is par for the course with Rockstar's online modes, and aside from some grunts or whistles, your character is completely speechless, at all times. 
In cutscenes, people will look you dead in the eye, and you'll just stand there and shrug. Which, like, yes, I understand having voice lines for a game in which most actions are the result of the player would be pretty difficult. But same thing with GTA Online, I never liked that your character doesn't speak at all. At least let us talk in cutscenes or something. It just takes me out of the world when every encounter with a person, I do nothing but stand there and nod my head. I can't get invested into this small story when my character doesn't do anything. Every encounter will go something like this. You enter a building, the cutscene starts. The person will speak to you, lets you know of a job opportunity, says something along the lines of, Oh, you're the silent type, ain't you? And then we'll continue to speak and give you all sorts of information to you, and you'll either shrug your shoulders or nod your head. And then you're off on the mission. There's no morality to it, really, because your character can't voice their opinion. The character who's talking to you has no way of knowing if you're there to murder them, or if you're there to help them or help the law. They just assume everything the moment you walk in the door. Maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh, and maybe I'm in the minority, but I would like some dialogue for your characters in online. It helps with immersion. I would be okay if all the guys sounded the same and all the females sounded the same. Having maybe one or two different voices would suffice in my opinion. But regardless, after you begin a mission or end a cutscene with your voiceless character, the gameplay begins. The gameplay for Red Dead Online is pretty much the same as the base game. You have your health core, stamina core, and your dead eye core. After some time, you'll need to eat or drink something to replenish those cores. Instead of wasting your limited money on buying food, I usually say it's just a good idea to kill some deer or go fishing. You only need to kill a few animals or catch a couple fish in order to have enough meat to cook that'll hold you over. Eating the big game meat or fish will replenish your coolers fully, and I usually have a bunch saved up in my inventory for when I need a snack. But if your cores aren't fully drained and you don't want to get fat, then you can buy or loot some smaller goods to help replenish your cores. I myself do not buy almost any foodstuffs from the stores, and instead I just find campsites or houses to enter where I can steal all of their shit. If you've played Red Dead Online, then you might know why I do this. Your horse has the same cores as story mode, yada yada yada. If you've played the story mode, then you know the basics of this. It's all the exact same except for Deadeye. In the main game, Deadeye slows down time, but when you're in an online setting, slowing down time wouldn't really be too easy when there's other real people playing too. Deadeye will change your screen color, and depending on your ability loadout, it'll help you paint targets or just help you do some extra damage. The ability cards are something you can equip more when you rank up though. They each offer some unique type of reward, but aren't extremely overpowered. You have some that make you start to regenerate health a little bit sooner, or deal a little bit more damage if you're close to death, etc. The more you level up, the more of these you can buy and equip, and you can also upgrade these cards to be more effective. There's missions that you can do that'll affect your honor, making it lower or higher, and giving you opportunities for new missions and encounters. You can choose to be good and escort wagons, repo people's stolen property, and defend persons from robbery in some random encounters. All to gain money and honor. Or you can be an outlaw and accept missions where you kidnap people, steal wagons, or assassination missions to take out rival gangs. Going to a rival gang hideout and making sure that you take down the targets. It's all up to you, really. If you're tired of missions, then you can take it to the different online modes. They got horse racing, death matches, and even small scale battle royale type modes. All of which offer different objectives and maps for you to learn. It's pretty decent, although I usually find myself sticking to the stranger missions and doing PvE as opposed to doing death matches. With Red Dead's weapon mechanics, I just really don't find PvP all that fun. Headshots are always lethal, which I don't mind, but people seem to dome pace me from any distance and I just struggle to land headshots consistently. But that's probably just because I'm awful at PvP in this game, which I totally understand. The Stranger missions and PvE missions are just more fun to me. This all seems like typical online stuff, right? 
So why am I making a video criticizing online if all I've described thus far is relatively positive? Well, to say online is awful would be a lie. I quite enjoy it, but I just don't think it can sustain consistent play for me, or at least someone like me. It's fun, but there isn't hardly enough to do. But before we jump into that hole, remember when I said I don't waste money on provisions from shops? Well yeah, that's because the online economy is absolutely awful. Rockstar favors microtransactions over player engagement in the long run in this. You can grind to earn enough money to buy what you need, or you can spend real life money on gold bars so you can purchase the items straight up, without any grind or waiting to be a certain level, which I would be okay with if the money you earned in game and what items cost made sense. Take for example a weapon like the Lynchfield Repeater that in the main game would cost about $145, but online, it'll cost me $348. It's over twice the cost and even more of a grind. Or let's take the double barrel shotgun. In campaign, it's about $95, and online, $185. It's almost $100 more for the same gun. Not to mention, some guns are locked behind a level requirement, so even if you have enough money, but you're not a certain level, you can't buy it. But there is a way to circumvent the level requirement. Gold bars. I had already mentioned that you can buy them with real money and buy items with them, but I didn't mention that on some items you can use gold bars to buy it before you're even the level that you would need to be to get the item. And if you bypass the level requirement, then it's going to cost you a few more gold bars than it would if you were the high enough level. For instance, when ponchos were first added, I wasn't a high enough level to buy it, but I had enough gold bars saved from when Rockstar was basically giving them away in the beta from the days of online that I just straight up bought it with gold. But it's also pretty much what used my whole supply of gold. I had a give or take 20 gold bars, and now I have like two left over from when I just bought a bunch of crap. But I've never spent real life money on gold bars. I refuse to take part in that system. Alright, well, we've agreed on the fact that prices are a little bit ridiculous, but is the earn rate for money slash gold decent enough to where you can play the game without caring about it too much? Well, no, not really. In the main game, you could loot someone and find a few bucks, sometimes a pretty decent amount. But on online, you can loot someone and get a few bullets or like 10 cents. I think the most I've pulled off of a corpse in this game online is like a dollar. Which might buy you like a chocolate bar or something from the shops. Your best route for getting money is doing missions or playing in PvP modes. Which, while they do give you some money, it's hardly enough. You might get like 10 bucks from some missions. Some give you more or less than others, which does make sense and I'm not mad about it. But if you get money so slowly, why are the prices so inflated? I mean, you earned money faster and the prices were cheaper in the campaign. Pick a damn side, Rockstar. Either keep these ridiculously high prices and increase the earn rate, or keep the earn rate relatively the same and lower the prices a bunch. Oh, uh, wait. That doesn't encourage people to spend real money on the game. You gotta keep the earn rate low and the prices high to incentivize people to buy gold bars. I mean, it's not like the game made a metric ton of money. According to the sites that I've read, Red Dead Redemption 2 has shipped over 23 million copies and counting as people are still buying the game. So let's lowball and say that they sold 20 million copies. Let's assume that all of those were of the standard edition at $60. That puts sales to about $1.2 billion in the minimum. I think it's safe to say that the game sold pretty well. And Take-Two has even stated that the game sold over $725 million worth of it in the first three days. I don't think selling gold bars is necessary, but it won't stop. So how do we fix the system and make prices or earn rates better and not use customers as anything but a dollar sign? 
I mean, I know companies exist for a profit, but when games seem to shove microtransactions down your throat, it gets harder to defend the people who made the game, even if it's not their fault. It'll make customers turn on you and start the cycle of distrust. But fixing the economy is only one part of the solution. I mentioned earlier that I don't think there's enough to do and I stand by that. Things that are in the main game are completely absent in online. In online, you cannot rob civilians, trains, stagecoaches, or anything like that. You can surely kill everybody you come across, but you can't pull off some heist unless it's literally part of a mission. You can be a good guy and do things to increase your honor easily. You can find those anywhere in the world. But to lower your honor, all you really have to do is some missions, or you can just murder everybody that you come across. But then you got a bounty on your head, which isn't specific to the region you did it in. Like in the story mode? Nope. I murdered some people in San Denis and had a bounty of like $2 on the whole map. Not the place I did the crimes, but literally everywhere I go I am wanted. Now, $2 is a small piece to pay off, and with the slow earn rate of money in gold, it just gets annoying to be the bad guy in online when there is so many repercussions for it. I mean, I don't think your honor level really does anything, except give access to some different missions, but still. If I want to be a bad guy outlaw, then give me more things I can do besides just shoot people in the face. But with the lack of character voices, it means it'd be pretty hard to pull off robbing somebody in a way that makes sense. You could just point a gun at them and hopefully they take the hint, but it would make more sense if you literally told them to give you their money. You know, like the main game already lets you do. There's just not enough. You walk by NPCs and they'll greet you, and they'll say hi and this and that, but all I can do is just stare at them. I can't say hi or threaten them. I can just look blankly through their soul, and then probably shoot them in the face. On the topic of not enough to do, you literally cannot live somewhere. You have a small camp that Crips sets up, and you can move it anywhere you want, but it's not persistent. You can't own a house or rent rooms and hotels to live. Any horses you have are stuck in stables in towns until you really need them. So something in GTA like owning houses or an apartment and having a garage for your vehicles is completely absent from Red Dead Online. I know the prices would probably be absurd, but I just wanted to live in a damn log cabin and tend to my horses and be able to sleep at a place that I can call my home without it being in the middle of nowhere and nothing more than a tent with some old dude named Crips standing over my body watching me sleep. But we know Rockstar hasn't completely forgotten about the game, because on a pretty consistent basis, they are updating the game, and adding new weapons and clothing items into Red Dead Online. It just seems that if it's not something that they can easily monetize and throw together relatively quickly, that they're not really in a rush to get it out there. We don't even know if they're thinking about adding new modes or this and that. I really don't see it too much on their social medias. All I'm really seeing is, hey, we got like 25% more money in these modes. Hey, we're adding new clothing options. So like I said, they're not really in a rush to give us what we want or need. There's so many fixes and improvements, quality of life things that could be added into Red Dead Online that would make people like me just play a little bit more. Maybe incentivize more people to actually spend real money if the economy is fixed Earn rates are significantly higher, and things just make a lot more sense. As it stands right now, there just isn't enough to do. All in all, Red Dead Online has some issues. A lack of content, an in-game economy that encourages you to spend real money, and the lack of a vision, really. It just feels like a bare-bones, stripped-down GTA Online with horses. Which I'm not saying that really as an insult. I enjoyed GTA Online back when I used to play it, but there's just so much more you can do in GTA Online as opposed to what you can do in Red Dead Online. Which is a shame because I love the western aesthetic. The graphics, sound design, and the ways the world moves is just amazing. There just needs to be... more. Ah well, at least they added poker. 
If you made it this far in the video, then let me know what you think in the comments down below. This video took quite a while to write and record, and I'm sure there's a few points that I missed out on or didn't expand enough on. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates!